Hello, I'm Kira for Shakti Power Yoga. Today we are going to work with our fifth chakra, which is our throat chakra. So come join me. We'll start out in downward facing dog today. And start pedaling out the heels and stretching the whole back body. Come up onto your tiptoes on an inhale. Really try to lengthen the back. And then exhale to slowly lower the heels back down to the ground. You can bend your knees if that makes this pose more accessible. And hold here. So this is the Vishuddha Chakra, which is our chakra of virtue and purity and our communication with everyone around us um, in order to know and share truth as we collectively experience it. So it's very important um, to express your voice. So if you feel like you can't express your truth right now, this is a really useful class for you. So go ahead and lower the knees to the ground, hips back, balasana, child's pose. Rest here, arms outstretched in front of you. This practice is really going to focus on the throat. So in every one of these poses where you're forward bending, we want to make sure the neck, the cervical spine, um, stays really long. So emphasize that right now, reaching forward with the forehead. And now we'll go ahead and rise up to Dasana pose, mountain pose. Plant into the feet here, spread out the toes. Tuck the pelvis only slightly, just so that you can feel a powerful base up to your hips. And now we'll go ahead and swing the arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. This time we're going to hold here. It's kind of untraditional, but it's really going to help us start to open up our throat chakra by bending the cervical spine back. Like I said, this is Vishuddha. Um, the color of this chakra is blue and the sound is hum. And the one word answer for what it represents is communication. And now go ahead and forward fold. Here we're lengthening the neck down. Inhale, halfway lift. In this pose, we want to focus on creating more space between the heart and the throat. And then we're going to keep that space as we step our left foot back, find low lunge, opening the chest again. Inhale, step back to plank. Exhale, release knees, chest, then chin to the floor. Root into the palms and lift the chest through to find Salabhasana B, keeping the feet rooting down. Exhale, press back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, left leg comes through, rise Anjanayasana. Exhale, palms back to the ground. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Swan dive up, Urdhva Hastasana on the inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. Grow tall here. We'll do that all again. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, fold down, Uttanasana. Inhale, the heart rises, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, left foot steps back, knee to ground. Inhale, rise up, Anjaniyasana. Exhale, swan dive to the ground. 
Inhale, plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg comes through, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, hands lower. Come up, Ardha Uttanasana, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, forward fold. And we'll do that one more time. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step the left foot back. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, arms lower. Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, left leg pulls through. Exhale, left palms reach towards the ground. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up, upward salute, back bend. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale to fold. Inhale to rise up halfway. Exhale, plank or chaturanga. And we'll all meet in upward facing dog. So stretching through the arms here, try to straighten the elbows, keep them tucked in towards the body. Head tips back once you're comfortable with the curve of your spine. And we'll hold here. Reaching the heart forward as much as possible, opening up your throat. We'll take lion's breath. So inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth with tongue to chin. Gaze at your third eye. Make this audible. Inhale again. And another lion's breath. Inhale again. And another lion's breath. Great job. Come back into Balasana. Child's pose. Some of us may feel silly doing lion's breath, but that's part of learning to work with your Vishuddha. We want to feel confident and in control and able to express ourselves. So it's a good sign if you can do that and own it. Great job. And we'll tilt ourselves forward and find plank pose. Hold here as a way to gauge the length from your heels all the way to your head. Try to imagine that your crown of your head is being pulled forward and the heels are sinking back towards the back wall. Hips stay up though. And now we'll lower all the way to the ground. Hands are by the sides. And we'll lift up on an inhale, Salambhasana A. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift up. 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 Exhale, lower. Rest for a second here, one cheek to the ground. We just created some warmth in our spine. And now maybe when we come up one more time, we can get more length. Really stretching the shoulder blades down and back and opening up our chest. So join me now. Inhale to rise up and hold. Power through the legs. The quads are active here. And opening up the chest. and release come with the opposite cheek to the ground.
Now we are going to take Dhanurasana bow pose. So reach back, grab your ankles, flex the toes, and now we'll lift up again. Kicking into the heels, our quads are super active this time, trying to straighten the knees. And we'll hold this. If you find yourself rocking back and forth um, with your breath, that's just an internal massage and it's really good for you. So stay with whatever motion you find if you find yourself rocking. Great job. One more breath. And come down. Cheek to the ground. Rest. We're going to come into the same pose once more, but this time I really want you to emphasize not only your chest, which is what um, probably is the typical focus, I want you to also emphasize your throat chakra here. So breathing with the neck really long in this pose, we'll lift up again, kicking through the legs, straightening the arms, protecting the low back by keeping the quads really flexed, and then lengthening the crown of the head as much as you can up towards the sky. Almost there, great job. And go ahead and lower down. Find your way to kneeling. We're going to take camel pose now which is basically just a 90 degree rotation of what you just did. So same rules apply, really stay active through the quads. This time it's even more important to keep those arms straight to protect your back. Keep the toes flexed if you want it to be a little bit easier or point the toes back if you want more of a challenge just by creating a little bit more space. And then we will lower our hands one at a time or both together to find camel pose. Don't hold your breath in this pose. Breathe easy. Now we're really exposing our neck here because the head can drop back a little bit further than it could in Dhanurasana. So stay with that. You're energizing your Vishuddha here. And really flex through the hip flexors again as you rise up slowly to protect your back. We're going to do that one more time. You should stay with this if you don't have experience, um, but if you want, you can, instead of taking camel pose ustrasana, take vagu vajrasana instead, which is the same pose, but your hands are less supportive. So we'll do that all together now. I'm dropping back into lagu vajrasana, which means that my hands are resting on the back of my knees. Emphasize flexing the hip flexors, flexing the quads to support the back. And let your neck relax. Great job, rise back up. Now these were pretty extreme back bends, so be really careful as we lower into Balasana now. Keep the arms back by your sides so that you're not stretching too far into a forward fold. And then rise up. From a seat, we'll take Ardha Matsundrasana, our seated twist. So left leg will come on top, Right arm reaches to bind here, and the left arm reaches back behind us as we twist. Inhale rises us up farther, and then an exhale twists us deeper. Keep following your own breath in this pattern. We're nurturing the spine here since we just made it do a lot of back bending work, 
and we have a little bit more back bending in store for it. Great job, straighten out the legs. Dandasana, staff pose. And now your right leg will come on top. Left arm binds with that right leg and right arm twists behind us. Go ahead and follow the breath once more. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, twist deeper. Follow your own breath with this pattern. Great job, come back through towards the center, Dandasana. Trying to rotate our hips forward here. And forward fold right through the center. and rise yourself back up, press into the palms, and shoot the hips up. If this is too difficult for you in this upward plank, you can bend the knees and come into an upward table. If it's comfortable, let the head drop back. I always feel this as a really great and unique shoulder stretch. And come back down, roll onto the mat. Legs rise up slowly and we'll come all the way back into Halasana. Bring the hands to the back and lift up Salamba Sarvangasana. This is a really great restorative pose if you do any kind of leg workout, running, cycling, or just lifting. This is really good for your circulation. But it's also really good for the throat chakra because we're creating this lock here in your throat. Press through the legs, really activating the entire legs. Point the toes here. And if you're getting a little too comfortable, go ahead and walk the hands further up the back, which is actually facing down. So walk your hands closer to the ground. Three options here. You can stay right here for another minute. You can drop into Halasana plow pose, or you can take Karna Padasana, which is basically a plow with bent legs. So if you're comfortable in plow, you can go ahead and lower the knees to the outsides of the ears. Try to create a little bit more space in the neck here if you're feeling a little bit congested. Two more breaths. And go ahead and slowly lower the legs all the way back out in front of you. 
Take the hands, palms down under the hips, and rise up through the forearms into fish pose. The goal is to get the top of your head all the way on the mat. And this is an active pose, a little bit of an active pose, I guess, because we still want to press through the forearms in order to really open the chest. So don't sink in too much. And we're reaching out through our pointed toes. and lower all the way and find your way into Shavasana. The throat chakra is often associated with a more sensitive, understanding of the flow of prana in our bodies which is the flow of energy so you when you make it up to the energy of the fifth chakra you no longer feel conflicted or um, pulled in opposing directions of love and compassion so we're able to find more of an energetic balance so Kudos to you um, on your spiritual journey if you've really made it up to the fifth chakra. I thought I'd go through the earlier chakras real quick as you're meditating. Your first chakra is your survival chakra, the muladhara. Picture a red flower with four petals placed at your tailbone. Your second chakra is the Swadhisthasana chakra, which is your sexuality and creativity. Picture an orange flower with six petals and place it in the center of your pelvis. Your third chakra is the Manipura chakra. It's for power and picture a yellow flower with 10 petals placed right at your solar plexus so about two inches above your belly button your fourth chakra is the anahata chakra the love chakra it's green and it has 12 petals place it over your heart but in the center and now we've made it to the Vishuddha Chakra, which is the communication chakra. It's blue and it has 16 petals and it lies right on your throat. This is the fifth of seven chakras. Your sixth chakra is the Ajna Chakra. It's purple and it only has two petals and it's right at your third eye, right between your eyebrows. Your seventh chakra is the Sahasrara chakra, which is all colors and has a thousand petals, and it emanates from your crown of your head. It's for all understanding. When you're ready, wiggle the fingers and toes and find a seat, moving with your own ease and at your own time. Hands to heart. Thank you for practicing with me today. Thumb knuckles to third eye. Bow forward, namaste. I hope you join me for the other chakra classes. There's a playlist that I'll put on the screen now. There will be seven videos total, so make sure to check the others out. Thank you. Namaste.